this video will cover valley climates forming part of the geography syllabus. We'll first examine the concept of aspect um, and basically what this is is just um, the angle at which the sun hits the surface of the earth. So the angle of incidence changes throughout the day. So obviously as the sun moves from being right on the horizon to directly above back to the horizon, the angle at which it strikes um, a specific surface changes throughout the day. The size of the angle of incidence affects the heating of the surface as well as the temperature of the air just above the surface. So if you look at this um, series, of, series of dry diagrams, when the sun is directly overheat, you get high energy in a small area. Um, you could say this was about three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is coming in at, at a slight angle and thus um, the same amount of sun is um, heating a larger area and thus it is not so strong. This can be at about 5 or 6 o'clock in the day when the sun's about to set. The energy is spread over a larger area. This diagram is also helpful in explaining why most people want to build their houses facing north because obviously the sun's rays in the southern hemisphere hit northern slopes more directly than they do southern um, south facing slopes. Um, and what this leads to is a shadow zone forming on south facing slopes. Um, some of the some of the ground not even getting one bit of sun throughout the day. The sun's rays strike north facing slopes more directly um, because the sun's rays come from the north. Please note this only applies to the southern hemisphere. It is the complete opposite in the northern hemisphere. North facing slope will be warmer, more evaporation on the north facing slope, obviously because of an intensified um, sun's rays. Uh, then if we look um, here, this is a bit later during the day, we can still see that the sun is targeting that north facing slope compared to our south facing slope and targeting a small area. It strikes the north facing slope more directly and therefore it's warmer. Then we move on to anabatic and catabatic winds. We'll start off with anabatic winds. Um, these are winds that form during the day. Um, an easy way to remember this is that catabatic winds, that's got the word cat in it, and cats are nighttime um, animals, so they form in the night, which means anabatic forms during the day. So this is a nice diagram just to illustrate their formation, and I'll go into some explanation of the diagram. They form during the day when there is clear skies. They blow in response to um, temperature and pressure differences between the top and the bottom of the slope. During the day, the upper slope receives more energy due to the angle of the sun's rays. Um, as we can see in the diagram here, A is heated quicker than C. Um, and then the air in contact with the upper slope gets warmer than um, the lower slopes because of a process called con uh, conduction. So as the surface heats, it heats the air immediately above it. As a result, the pressure is lower on the upper slopes and the wind blows up the slope from the high pressure at the valley floor to the low pressure um, at the upper slopes. Contact maintained with the warm slope ensures continued ascending air. Valley winds, which are also associated with um, anabatic winds as they blow along the length of the valley. Um, air in the narrow head of the valley, so right at the top of the valley, warms faster than the greater amount of air lower down the valley as less air is in contact with the warm surface um, compared to far down the valley. This leads to a low pressure upstream um, and a valley wind forms. Anabatic winds displace air from the valley floor, which creates a pressure gradient that draws in air from lower down the valley. Um, a weak return flow, uh, known, a weak return flow of wind is known as the anti-valley wind. One slope may have a greater anabatic wind due to aspect um, and the amount of insulation um, striking the surface. Then we move on to catabatic winds, as I said earlier, cat associated with nighttime, so these occur during the night, occur at night only with a clear sky. The air on the upper slope is in contact with the ground, that's in contact with the ground, becomes cooler, 
and denser than the air at C. So, um, as we can see in this diagram A and C, uh, the cold dense air moves down the slope due to gravity. Adiabatic warming is counteracted by conduction from the cold slope. Uh, as a result, a pool of cold air forms at the bottom of the valley. This is known as the frost pocket um, and is illustrated here. And then a pool of cold air is stratified um, and the coldest air at the bottom um, coldest air is at the bottom of the valley and is obviously less cold um, on the upper slopes. Catabatic winds that start higher on the slope often do not travel all the way to the valley floor. Um, they either spread out at an altitude where they have the same buoyancy as the surrounding air or they end up in a turbulent eddy above the valley floor. This leads to a mild thermal belt, which is another important concept you need to know of air in the mid to upper portion of the valley. That's why you'll see in, in rural um, valleys, most of the farmers will build their houses um, about halfway up the valley, slightly higher than halfway, because it is situated in the thermal belt. Good for farming and there are fewer frost days compared to in right in the bottom of the valley as illustrated in the image. In a mountain wind, so this is associated with catabatic winds, Small amounts of air at the head of the valley cools more quickly than the mass of air below um, towards the bottom of the valley. Therefore, a high pressure develops near the mountain um, and the air begins to move toward the low pressure down the valley. Note why they're called mountain winds is because they come from the mountains down to um, the bottom of the valley. Then pollution in a valley, cold air drains um, downwards uh, down the valley terrestrial radiation is lost as a result warm air rises but is trapped by the inversion layer the inversion layer is lower during winter and as a result pollution is also trapped within this inversion layer and we get pollutants concentrating um, themselves in valleys then if we look at specific reference to the thermal belt what it is is a calm is associated with calm, cold and clear winter nights when there is extreme um, radiation loss or rapid radiation loss. So we can see from this diagram we've got warm air is displaced um, upward due to the cold air wedging under it. So we've got our frost pocket under here, it wedges some warm air here and then we've got air still descending into the valley which traps this thermal bulb. Cold catabatic wind sinks down the slope due to gravity Convergence causes air to rise, but it cannot rise above the warm air. Um, if we just look at another diagram illustrating the relationship between height and temperature with specific reference to this thermal belt, you can see there. Frost pocket, cold air collects at the bottom of the valley, which can cause the temperature to drop sufficiently um, and frost may form. Radiation fog is a common weather occurrence associated with um, valleys. It forms when a dew point temperature um, in the frost pocket is above zero degrees Celsius, formed by the cooling of the land after sunset um, by thermal radiation in calm conditions with the clear skies. Coo cooling ground, um, the cooling ground cools the adjacent air via conduction, which causes the air temperature to fall, um, reaching the dew point temperature and thus leading to the formation of radiation fog. Then if we look at the influence of local climates aspect, buildings built on north facing slopes um, as it is warmer and lighter. In summer rays do not enter buildings as the angle is too great while in winter the small angle means they enter buildings resulting in a moderating effect. North facing slopes are hotter and drier while south facing slopes are cooler and more moist. Um, this obviously only applies to the southern hemisphere, please note. Then if we look at a temperature inversion um, and that thermal belt, settlements are built above the cold air in the thermal belt. Um, this belt has very stable conditions. Pollution cannot in, um, exit the valley due to the inversion layer. On foggy days, um, smog forms. This pollution forms a layer over the area as it cannot rise above the inversion layer. The inversion results in high pollution in valleys as the pollution plume cannot disperse. Um, this may lead to acid rain forming. 
Then if we look at the frost pocket, the frost pocket affects farming. It also affects the development of settlements because, and then with specific reference to the frost, uh, many farmers lose a large amount of their crop per year because they farm too low down in the valley uh, due to frost. Then if we look at land and sea breezes, not very important, but I will still go through it. This diagram illustrates exactly how a sea breeze forms. And remember, a sea breeze, it comes from the sea, coming off the sea onto the land. Warm air from the land cannot expand into the sea air as it is cooler and more dense. Warm air rises and condenses. You can get your cumulonimbus clouds forming over the land as a result. It can extend up to 70 kilometers inland and blow between 4 and 8 meters per second. The sea breeze front, the leading edge of the advancing cold marine air coming off the ocean, behaves similarly to a cold front. Then we look at land breezes, direct opposite to a sea breeze, obviously a land breeze, it comes from the land, land into the sea. A low pressure over the sea um, uh, at night causes um, air to rise and, and then um, it cools and condenses. Air flows from the land to the sea along the pressure gradient from the high pressure of the land to the low pressure over the sea. Um, affects a smaller area than a sea breeze and lower wind speeds. Extends about 10 to 15 kilometers out to sea and blow between two and three meters per second. Thank you, that concludes the video on valley climates.